www.dandyduns.com. <laughs> Welcome back to La La Land on CRN Digital Talk. That's Nettie Liddell. And that's Brett Chapin. We're talking to actor Mackenzie Aston and producer Jason Lowe uh, from the play Caught at the Zephyr Theater. So lucky to have them. We are very lucky to have them. It goes, it's lucky to be here. It goes both ways. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we were when we left off, we were talking um, a little bit um, about lineage, and I'm, I'm kind of curious, um, were your mom and dad pretty supportive um, of your choice and, and Sean's choice to be involved in acting? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they, they, they were... They were cautious in, in some ways because of their own experiences. Um, uh, you know, my mom uh, missed out on a lot of her childhood, uh, and uh, so they wanted to make sure that, that we didn't have an experience that was um, unfair to us without our knowledge. Uh, but once they were uh, they were aware that it's really what we wanted to do, they were fully supportive. Mm -hmm. fully supportive. You started at eight, correct? Your, yeah, your eight choice. or nine. Um, yeah, it was funny actually. My uh, my brother started first. Uh, he and my mom worked together on uh, an after school special um, for ABC in I don't know eighty two or eighty three, and I went down to the set one day to visit, and I saw my brother getting a whole bunch of attention, and I thought, wow, this is something <laughs> that I would like too. <laughs> my turn, Sean. My turn. <laughs> exactly. And so it wasn't too awesome. long after that that I was able to uh, start auditioning for stuff and and wasn't too long after that that I was lucky enough to start working awesome yeah and um, and you of course continued working um, you know from there you went to the facts of life yeah I that believe. was a great gig really really lucky to get at 11 years old uh, and and work uh, steadily until I was uh, 14 any crushes on uh, any of the girls? From, all of them. Uh, all of them. course. <laughs> but not at the same time. No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the day of the week. Indeed. Indeed. Awesome. And the weather. Yes. <laughs> but I really well, feel like there is something that sets you apart from your lineage, which is interesting. I read a quote of yours. I don't know. I could be, but let me know. It says, you, you used to get flack from agents because you didn't want to play parts with violence. You never wanted to be a villain. I mean, like that in general. So you would just turn, like, turn it down because you didn't want to romanticize violence on television or I mean that's pretty amazing there were there were a couple of experiences that I had um, that uh, that really sort of led me in that in that direction I mean it, it, it occurred to me as, as a relatively uh, young child that um, that a lot of people um, a lot of people sort of uh, b believe in what goes on um, on yes. screen uh, a great deal, and and they they take from it. I, I mean, I know I, I enjoyed playing you know army men and cowboys and Indians a bunch when I was uh, a youngster, and that didn't come from uh, books I was reading that had uh, everything to do with what I was seeing on TV. And at a certain point, I think it was during uh, the first uh, Gulf War, uh, I, I realized that. Um, you know, I didn't necessarily want to play. The, I didn't want to play somebody who was a hero because he had to use a gun. Um, and and uh, granted, there are a couple of jobs that I have taken uh, where indeed uh, that takes place. And and th that's where this business is kind of funny because at a certain point, uh, how did my dad put it? You have to dance with the devil in order to mm. uh, in order to pay the rent. Right. Um, and so there were a number of jobs that I turned down when I was uh, or job uh, opportunities, auditions, really that I turned down um, because I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be somebody who later in life had someone come up to them and say hey man when you raped that girl in that movie that was just so great you know i really yeah. thought that was you know neat and i i just i didn't i didn't want to be that guy and um yeah and thankfully i've been able to to get away with with that on uh, you know uh, on a personal note i i uh, that stuff uh, certainly sells uh, and um well i mean as i don't know how much good it's doing really wow well. But as an actor, you probably want to be able to play the villain and everything. I mean, everything's so juicy and, you know. They do say those are the, the good parts. Um, and and my, my dad's advice, uh, whenever I have, I've, I've gone in to play, uh, you know, uh, the bad guy on something, um, uh, you know, to audition to play the bad guy on something, his, you know, his reminder is, remember, even the villain likes himself. You know, he, he, mm -hmm. he thinks he's right. doing the right thing. And so that's, that's right. you know, that's something that's... Yeah. It's it's funny as as there's I think I think growing up with parents who were successful and and seeing the effect that their success had on the people um, that they encountered throughout their lives sort of gave me a different perspective on what it really means to be a working actor in this business because what you do has an effect on how people behave yes. literally it does and so um, so I was really cautious uh, for a long time about what I even wanted to go in uh, to, to to audition for you know because people really you know they. 
you you are you are a, a role model in a lot of ways. Sure. And and it's not just uh, what happens off screen. It's it's I would say primarily what happens on. Now um, th that's a very easy uh, uh, position to maintain um, for someone who uh, maybe wouldn't be the best guy to play the villain, <laughs> as mm -hmm. uh, you know, almost as a as a justification for not for not even um, making the attempt to fail uh, for those auditions. But um, I think I think it's all relative. It's how you see yourself. I yeah. mean, that's a true artist. You no, know, I, you know, I, it's yeah. it's interesting. Um, over the last you know uh, twenty years or so, uh, how how much of an influence uh, show business has, uh, has has had on on the youngsters, and not just show business, but the video games and and uh, the music videos and and stuff like that. And and I, I feel like. I feel like if you can be responsible in the choices that you make, then you're certainly going to sleep better at night. Um, unfortunately, um, the, the the diet uh, that that people have in terms of their entertainment consumption these days is, you know, filled with a lot of uh, what I like to label trans fats. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. there's a lot of people shooting each other in a lot of different movies, yeah. and. Um, that's great it's, that you have your line that you will not cross. Well, you know? uh, yeah, I, th that said, I, I have a family now, and there's a there's mm -hmm. someone I have to take care of, and so sure. you know, if I walked out of here today and there was a, a job offer uh, for someone you know who was a bad guy, I, I might have to take it, and and that's where. You know that's where this business can be um, interesting, like that. You know, I think even just saying that, who knows? Yes. Who knows what next week will bring? Right. Um, and you actually, um, I, I understand, for a few years became a little bit disillusioned with the industry. Um, sure. There's a, a quote from you um, that I have here where it says, uh, <laughs> "This goes back a bit." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a period when I became disillusioned with the politics of what goes on in show business. My mom had missed a lot of her childhood, so I figured it would be a good time to hang up my acting shoes. I was probably reading too much J.D. Salinger at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, first of so, all, I would like to amend that. I don't think it's possible to read too much Salinger. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I, I was probably trying to, to, to get cutesy at the end of that quote, and uh, and I have I have long wanted to, just to uh, explain it. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity. Okay. Um, we got about 45 seconds. All right. Go Here it goes. Um, I believe it's the Catcher in the Rye, where um, where the bad guys are the phonies. Mm -hmm. And I discovered uh, at around 14 years old that something, well, that that in this business, people will tell you one thing when they mean another. Uh, it's a business, you know. Um, sure, we're trying to make people laugh, but. Um, it's a business, and so uh, what you see is not necessarily what you get. And I just, I sort of learned that the hard way. Hold that thought. I want you to talk more about that when we come back on La La Land with Brett and Nett on CRN Digital Talk. Looking at 